G'day guys, it's Kev here from Kev's Collectibles, back with a final haul for the year. Um, I've got a lot of books to cover today, um, but I thought I'd make a final video. Obviously with Christmas and the holidays coming up, um, it's best to, to get this out of the way so we can all enjoy the holidays. Um, I've got three key topics I guess to talk about today. Um, firstly, I want to give you a little bit of, uh, I guess, tips in regards to um, a little pot of gold at the end of a rainbow, in particular this book here, which I'll get into later. Um, some of you um, may actually have this in your collections and you don't know about it, um, but I'll get into that later. Second topic is um, <clears throat> providing you with some comic book spec um, around the um, the final episode of The Mandalorian Show Season 2. Um, and the third topic is basically some uh, comic book spec um, in relation to the, obviously, the Disney um, investor announcement or presentation that was done a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, let's get kicking into it. So, this book here is uh, Knights of the Old Republic number one from 2006. Now, um, I want to give you a little bit of background to the story first before I get into this book. So, um, so this is set 4,000 years before the destruction of the first, first Death Star. And it has quite a few major first appearances in it. It's got uh, Zane Carrick, who's this young Jedi, Jedi Padawan. It's got Griff, who's a, a smuggler, um, an illegal goods trader who uh, Zane Carrick is actually trying to... Uh, track down and capture and we have several um major jedi masters such as lucian dre who was actually zane carrick's um master now let's get into this book um the cbsi crew did an interview with the actual writer of the knights of the old republic series um whose name is john jackson miller now i'll um post a link to that particular um, video show in the description but during that interview John Miller actually said that there is a very rare second print of this book that not many people actually know about and he said that um, uh, basically uh, you can't tell the difference between a first and second print um, now in front of me I actually have a first and second print um, and he said, you can't really tell the difference between the two. Um, they look exactly the same. So I'm going to give you a few tips um, in how to actually find or spot one. So the one in front of me, <clears throat> which is this one here, is actually the second print. Now, the way I've uh, picked this is, if you look at the lady's boot on the bottom... So the one right there, see the little curve, the top of a boot, that is the second print. The one below it is the first print, and it's not so prominent. It only shows a little portion of it, but the second print seems to have this um, yeah, more pronounced um, top of the boot. It also has, this is the um, uh, second print here. Um, it's kind of like a, a blue color, whereas the um, first print is more of a purpley color, as you can see. But this is the this next way is the the way you actually really find out if it's truly a second uh, print. Now, in terms of numbers, um, John Miller said there's actually only 2,000 of these in existence that were printed, and Diamond Distributors never actually recorded this. Now, if you look at the um, <clears throat> in indation section, which is in the front of the first page, it actually says here, see that? Second printing, right there in the middle. That's how you know it's a second printing. In the first printing, you just don't see first printing at all. It just has all that other text there, um, nothing else. So um, I would suggest you guys check your uh, <clears throat> collections and see if you actually have a very rare second printing. And goodness knows how many other people have these second prints that have been slabbed. Um, and they don't even know it. So it's, it's quite a rare book. <clears throat> so next up, um, I have 
Darth Maul number two. Um, now I talked about this book um, recently um, at a, um, a live appearance with the Teen Nerdhood crew. Um, I'll post a link to that um, in the description to that that show. We actually see me live and see my ugly mug um, for the first time. So, um, but we talk about this book in particular, and <clears throat> obviously with the um, the the end of the uh, latest Mandalorian show, there was that um, a post credit scene where Boba Fett basically uh, storms into uh, Jabba the Hutt's palace. Uh, in Tatooine, <clears throat> and he takes out Bib, Bib Fortuna, who obviously um, survived the uh, sail barge explosion in Return of the Jedi, and he and he basically assumes the mantle or the the throne as the new boss of the crime underworld, um, with Fennec Shand at his side. So, um, and then right at the end um, of the credits, uh, it popped up saying, uh, "The Book of Boba Fett." coming December 2021 so that is actually I'm guessing a new uh, Disney Plus series um, that obviously wasn't announced at that Disney um, investors uh, uh, presentation a couple weeks back because uh, you know obviously they wanted to keep it a surprise but I think and this is my view that <clears throat> we are going to uh, not only um, see new stories about Boba Fett and the current time frame with, with you know in line with Mandalorian but we're going to be exploring his past as well so stories like how he escaped the Sarlacc pit etc but um, I think we're definitely going to see um, Cad Bane appear so for those of you who don't know who Cad Bane is he's um, he's a fan favorite uh, bounty hunter from um, the Clone War series and he was uh, created by by Dave Filoni um, and this book here, which is Darth Maul 2, is his first appearance. Um, and I have been able to quite fortunately pick up recently um, the Aja variant, which is a 1 in 25 um, uh, variant. And his first cover appearance is in Darth Maul number 3. Um, and he's right there. And the story with this is basically um, Dave Filoni went to, um, uh, had a chat with George Lucas and he asked him what his favourite alien was in the Star Wars um, universe. And then basically George told him it was the Duros. And so Dave Filoni went away and created uh, Darth Bane and even gave him the you know famous Dave Filoni hat. So, um, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And um, shout out to um, a hood rat from the Teen Nerd Herd crew. Now, he showed on that particular show, I was just mentioning before, there's actually a second print of this book, which has a darker background. Um, and I never actually knew that existed until he actually showed it on the show. So it must be a, I, I've actually never seen it, so it must be a low print run. But that is the one you probably want to, grab if you if you um yeah want to find his first cover appearance that this is a beautiful book too look at the artwork it's amazing okay so the next thing i want to talk about is star wars tales another star wars tales book right here we are star wars tales number 19 now this came out in 2004 some of you will recognize this book so um during the final episode of the Mandalorian show, um, there was obviously the amazing appearance of Luke Skywalker, um, and it was pretty cool for my, well, in my previous two shows, I actually predicted he would appear, so that was cool to see that actually happen. Um, but at this time, well, at the end of the show, obviously Luke went away with um, Baby Yoda or Grogu, and... Um, Around this time, or in a few years' time, he actually creates um, a Jedi training academy. Um, basically, he's trying to rebuild the Jedi Order after it was, you know, devastated after Order sixty six. So he's training a new generation of um, of Jedi, and obviously Grogu appears to be one of his very first pupils. Now, um, uh, obviously, Mando was saying, you know, I'll see you again, 
and I truly believe that. Um, obviously, Grogu is such an, um, such a popular character. We'll definitely see Grogu again, but I think um, potentially Grogu um, will reunite with uh, Mando in the future, in a future episode of The Mandalorian, um, where Mando actually travels down to wherever the training is happening or the, the, the Jedi Academy is with Luke and um, and visits Grogu there. And I believe that um, we actually may see um, Ben Solo. Now, this is an interesting book. So Star Wars Tales 19, which came out in 2004, um, a lot of sites are saying that this is the first um, appearance of uh, Ben Solo, right? But it's it's kind of a tricky one. So again, I'll show you the book. Um, it's actually it's an interesting one. So it's actually his. Um, it's over here. It's in this uh, story called um, the Lost Lightsaber, and Basically, at the end of the story, uh, someone pops up, and it is, um, it says, I am Jedi Knight Ben Skywalker, son of uh, Luke Skywalker. So basically, in this version, um, he is the son of Luke Skywalker, and also the, the son of... Um, of Mara Jade, who is um, who Luke Skywalker married, and that's why obviously he's blonde there as well. Um, obviously, uh, Ben Solo in the um, sequel uh, movies is, is a you know dark head because of his father and his mother, obviously. Um, so, this is, I guess, a retconned character. So, it's not Ben Solo, it's kind of it's Ben Skywalker who kind of turned into Ben Solo. So, yeah, this book, I guess, um, yeah, you could say it is, but it's it's a kind of a retcon version of him. Um, I guess the real, true, potentially first appearance is um, Star Wars: The Force Awakens number two. I may be wrong on that. I'm not sure, but um, I could be corrected on that. But you know, you guys let me know if that, if I'm wrong about that. But, um, yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know that um, because this book is selling for quite a bit and, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Now you've got that information about it. Um, the next book I want to talk about is, um, and this is another interesting book that I want to show, is um, Star Wars Tag and Bink, We're Here, um, from 2018. Now this is um, a, a collection of the... Uh, four comics, Tag and Binker Dead um, 1 and 2. And basically, um, the reason why I brought this book up is that um, there was an announcement of uh, the, the Disney um, uh, upcoming movies and TV series, um, obviously at the Investors uh, uh, Conference or video, um, that um, a new TV series would be um, put together called The Acolyte, which has been described as a mystery thriller which will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and um, dark side powers uh, in the final days of the High Republic. Um, now, a lot of uh, websites and articles and videos have been made um, speculating who um, or what characters may appear in that particular series, and it, and it seems to be they're talking about about Darth um, Darth Plagueis the Wise. Um, now, for those of you who don't know who Darth, Darth Plagueis the Wise is, he's basically the guy that um, uh, was the the master of um, Palpatine or the Emperor. And as you can, as you probably recall in the in the first movies, um, Palpatine was having a chat with uh, Anakin, and he, he said, "Do you recall the story of um, Darth Plagueis the Wise?" Um, and this book apparently is his first appearance and only appearance in comic books. 
Now, um, this, um, the thing with Tag and Bink is that it's actually a, I guess, a satirical or comedic take on Star Wars. So it's not really serious. Um, but I'll show you where Darth Plagueis actually appears. Now, he is right at the end here. Here we go. So, um, oh, and the book that I'm talking about, which is the actual first print, is, um, that's the cover of it there, which is, um, uh, I think, number... Oh, that's right. It's Tag and Bink, Episode 1, Revenge of the Clone Menace. Um, from 2006, so that's the cover of that, um, that's the one you want to find, um, now this is where, you know, the bit where, um, Palpatine talks to Anakin about Darth Plagueis the Wise, and this is where he actually appears, right here, um, uh, I'll try and zoom in, this is Darth Plagueis the Wise right there, that's his only appearance, apparently, in comics, um, so, this book is really heated up um, of late, um, and I don't know, it's just that because it's a, a, a funny take on Star Wars, it's, it doesn't seem as serious to me, but I mean, again, it is his first appearance, so yeah, it's still a pretty cool book anyway. But keep your eye out, out for that one if you can get it, but it's starting to go, it's, it's starting to get really expensive. Right, um, more books to go through. Um, yeah, here's here's a really good one. So, obviously, um, during the Disney announcement, there was um, Kathleen Kennedy, who's not exactly my most favourite person in the world, was talking about, um, briefly, about Taika Waititi's um, uh, Star Wars movie that's currently in development. Tiger White is actually from New Zealand, where I'm from as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and in the background, um, she didn't actually provide much information about the movie, what it's about. But um, in the background, um, she actually had a picture which gave a lot of information away um, to a lot of people. Now, I'll show you on my my notepad here, but this is her making the announcement and as you can see here you see this this object here and um this planet it's traveling towards right so what that is is actually um the alien pyramid ships which are these um which basically go around the i i talk about this in my previous um uh, sorry, my my haul from two yeah two hauls ago. Um, basically, these ships go around um, collecting four sensitive um, uh, alien races around the Star Wars universe and brings them to Tython. Um, now, the book that everyone's been focusing on this is the Star Wars Jedi series um, zero through to five. Now, man, these things have been selling for a lot of money, but the Two big books that people have been focusing on are number zero, um, particularly the third print where she shows this um, Tho Your uh, pyramid ship on the cover with a white background. That's the one that, that everyone's kind of wanting to get on their list. And then there's the um, this book, obviously, which is Dawn of the Jedi um, number one. There's also a second print with a different background. Um, but the one that everyone wants is the, I think the 1 in 15 or the 1 in 25 variant. Um, now this has two key appearances in it. But um, everyone's been kind of focusing on those first two books, of 0 and 1. But they haven't been focusing on this one, right? So this is number 2. Now, um, the importance of this book is that it actually has 7 appearances first appearances now like i said number one only has two this one has seven appearances five of which are really major characters in the series and potentially obviously in the movie that taika is currently um you know putting together so 
Um, so those main characters are um, Dagon Locke, who's a, a human Jedi master and general of the Jedi Order. We've got uh, Hawk Ryo, who's a male Twi'lek ranger, who was basically betrayed by his um, best friend, and he has a, a purple lightsaber. You've got Tasha Ro, who's a female Twi'lek, um, who doesn't use any weapons to defend or attack. She actually uses her force powers, like force push. Um, so she's um, yeah, quite powerful like that. Another major character's, uh, character is Shay Koda, who's a female human ra uh, ranger. And she actually carries with her an actual blade or sword blade, but it's imbued with um, the power of the force, so it's kind of kind of glows with an aura. And then the other major character is um, Sekinos Wrath, who's a a male redskin Sith, who's also a ranger, and he's a renowned um, warrior and ladies ladies man, and he kind of um, gets betrayed and and turns uh, to the dark side so those are some of the major characters from number two and this is the book i think you should really be setting your sights on um yes zero and one are really good books um to get but if you can just single out a particular book bang for your buck so to speak get number two i think that's a great book but like i said there's other other books within the series and this series on ebay man selling for a huge chunk of money it's crazy um, just after that Disney announcement. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about, let's have a look. Um, just grabbing these books, just a sec, guys. Um, is Star Wars number two? Now, this book has been long neglected um, and underrated for so long. Um, I think part of the reason is that, um, well, Star Wars number one was actually considered um, the first full appearance of, or first appearance of uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, but that's that's incorrect. Um, it's actually, and I'll show you what I mean. This is where the confusion lay. Um, so this is Star Wars number one. You have Ben Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi on the cover you also have the first cover appearance of um, Solo there as well but they're actually not in this book they don't appear in this book they appear in number two um, and so the big announcement obviously is the new um, uh, Kenobi uh, Star Wars Disney Plus show and um, this book here is uh, Star Wars number two for 1977, and it's the first full appearance of um, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, um, Han Solo, and uh, Chewie as well. Now I'll just open the book up and show you. There's obviously the really rare um, third, uh, sorry, the 35 cent um, variant, which goes for you know, thousands of dollars, but it starts off with uh, Obi Wan making the uh, a crate dragon sound to scare off the Tusken Raiders and there he is he appears straight off the bat and throughout the whole book so um, yeah and, and obviously here we see um, the first appearance of Chewbacca and um, and obviously Han Solo here so um, very very important book um, it's been overlooked for a long time, but now it's finally getting some love, which is great to see. Uh, next book I want to talk about is um, Star Wars number 43. Now, let me try and find that book. Sorry, guys, I've got books all over the place. Right, here it is here. So, Star Wars number 43. So, um, obviously there is the announcement of the new Lando series, and um, this is the first full appearance of Lando Calrissian, who's on the cover, um, and it's also Boba Fett's second appearance um, after uh, Star Wars number uh, 42. 
so a really important book obviously this one's also been overlooked for a long time but now it's getting the love it, tr it truly deserves now i'll show you um the inside of this book um you see basically lando obviously on the cover but on the very first page bam look at the artwork it's beautiful back then as well and um you see boba fett um oh that's right that's the other importance of this book is um it's boba fett's second appearance um and he appears over here when obviously they get double crossed by lando um he kind of had no choice anyway but um and then right at the end obviously um han gets put into um um yeah, he gets frozen into carbonite. It doesn't actually show the carbonite, but it kind of shows the, the steam coming off at the end there. Um, funnily enough, it doesn't actually show the bit where Leia says, I love you, and he goes, I know. He kind of says, uh, yeah, I know. I feel the same way, so it's kind of lame. So it's not as not as cool, or because I'll be back. Yeah, it's, it's not as cool as in the movie. Um the next book I want to show you is Star Wars number six. Now, um, the reason why this is an important book is it's actually um, uh, the first appearance of um, Wedge Antilles. Now, um, before talking about Wedge, um, the reason why this book is important now is that um, you've had the recent announcement again, Disney, another TV series. Oh, sorry, it's a movie this time. Um, the announcement of a new movie called Rogue Squadron and this particular movie is being directed by the uh, Wonder Woman director female director and apparently her father uh, she's inspired to make this particular movie because her father used to fly jets for the United States Air Force and he actually passed away um uh when she was quite young so it's kind of sentimental in in many respects as well but um getting back to this book this is actually the first full appearance of um uh, wedge antilles now wedge is basically the um the leader of the rogue squadron in star wars um and he's also the um i'll open the book and show you actually his first appearance so um the previous book number five actually shows his cameo appearance um but this is actually his first full appearance and so it's more more important in my opinion but here you see him right here that's him right there um it says blue two standing by blue leader but in the movie he's actually saying red two um and he's kind of um he's luke's uh luke's there he's luke's uh wingman and as you know um they go to make the attack run to blow up the death star um and while they're making their attack wedge actually gets um his ship gets badly damaged um which is over here just bear with me guys and he says here um i can't stay with you and luke says okay we just get you know get out of there and we just apologizes and this is where obi-wan starts talking to luke to focus on the force to you know sh to shoot um the torpedo into the vent to blow up death star um now wedge and tilly's is he has quite a long career in the rogue squadron and um basically um he's a yeah very important character so i wouldn't be surprised if he turns up in in that movie um so another important so he, he's also the um basically the alliance's um top fighter ace um which leads me into this next book which is um this one here which is um x-wing uh, squadron, uh, Rogue Squadron number 25 from 1997 um, and it's uh, the making of Baron Fell. So basically this is the origin story of Baron Soon Tia Fell who is the um, I guess the uh, fighter pilot ace of the 
of the Empire, who's like the counterpart of um, Antilles. Um, so his first appearance is actually in um, X-Wing Rogue Squadron number 21. But this particular book is the um, first, I guess, uh, origin story of him. And basically, um, the story in this particular book is he gets captured by the rebels and interrogated. And he kind of goes through his story of how he, you know, grew up and became a pilot. And it just provides a really cool origin story about him. Um, and the other thing that makes this really important is actually it's the second comic book series appearance of um, Admiral Thrawn. This, this is why this book is actually heating up as well. So obviously, you know, Ahsoka dropping his name in the Mandalorian show. Um, Thrawn is the, you know, big focus with a lot of collectors at the moment. So that's his appearance there. And I think there's a couple other appearances right there. And right at the end as well. Um, yeah. So so several appearances and he talks quite a bit in this particular book. So that is definitely one to keep an eye out for. And um, finally, the last book is this one here, which is um, uh, X-Wing, um, well, Handbook Volume 1, X-Wing Rogue, Rogue Squadron from 1998. Now, this is a really cool book because it's kind of like a, a reference book, and it tells you everything um, about the Rogue Squadron uh, storyline basically so it talks about all the main characters the major players um, and it even goes through all the various ship types etc and i'll quickly go through that with you and show you and it's a cool cover as well that's um wedge antilles there too on the bottom there um, again showing highlighting how important he is but and again he's the first person they talk about and provide information here that's him there and then the um the baron soon to fell which i was just talking about before that's him there that's his info about him there and all these other characters um and later you see info on the various um x-wings uh y-wings and tie fighters as well the interceptor and, and the tie fighter standard tie fighter um so i think this is a great book to get to, I guess, familiarize yourself with all the characters and everything about the Rogue Squadron, and um, potentially it could provide some some really, um, you know, interesting pearls of wisdom for future spec books um, to look out for in, in the Squadron for the Squadron movie. So that's my haul, guys. It's been a bit of a long one. Um, I just want to say thank you, big thank you to all my um it's been a really massive year for my channel but for star wars in general um you know star wars i think we're moving into a new golden age and um i think the future is really bright for um uh, comic book spec and, and collecting for star wars moving ahead um so i want to have a big thank you to uh, in particular to the cbsi crew um also team nerd herd um and all of you, um, uh, all the community members out there, I've made a lot of good friends um, out there. And, you know, it's it's just been amazing to experience this with all of you and share this passion with all of you guys. So I want to wish you all an amazing Christmas um, and a happy new year with your family and friends. Um, please stay safe and um, look forward to providing more um, comic book hauls uh, next year for you. Okay, guys. Take care and have a good one. See ya. Bye.